God's grace and peace to you. Welcome to worship at Beth Page Presbyterian Church. We are glad you're here. I have a few announcements for you this morning. One is uh, today is World Communion Sunday. Um, it is not a Presbyterian table. All who trust in God are welcome. Also, I wanted to tell you about Crop Walk, which is next Sunday. Uh, we're, many of us are going to be walking in Crop Walk, collecting money for hung, world hunger through church world service. If you are interested in walking, the walk starts at 2 o'clock, and you can see Chris. He's back there in the maroon shirt, and he will give you all the information you need. Also, next Sunday, we're doing something different in worship, and that is worshiping outdoors in God's beautiful creation. Here on the church campus, come dress comfortably, whatever the weather is, and bring a lawn chair. And if it's pouring down rain, we're still having worship, but we'll move inside. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Other announcements. Chris, do you have t-shirts today? Good. This, say it again. If you need a t-shirt or you want a t-shirt, that's what they look like on the back. And on the front, they say Beth Page Presbyterian Church. This is our new theme for the fall, Come Grow With Us. So, um, and Chris has them and they're $12. Are there other announcements that I need to mention? Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Please join me in our call to worship. Around the world, people gather to break bread and pour wine. We gather this in heart and mind. Around the world, the broken body is made whole. As part of that body, we join in its unity. Around the world, the banquet of God is prepared for the table. We need to share in the banquet. Come eagerly to be fed. Let us worship together. Let us share God's bounty. Let us pray. Almighty God, even as the drums of warfare beat on through the night, even as the cries of injustice linger in the morning, even as the hustle of busyness rumbles through the day, quiet our hearts. Still our thoughts. Join us in our worship. Remember us in your mercy as we try to remember you through the proclamation of your good news in story and in song and through the hospitality of your gracious table. Welcome us again, one Lord, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
great indeed is the faithfulness of God, and yet our hearts are not so reliable. We wander, we argue, we forget. We divide ourselves with anger and bitterness and falsehood. Let's try to come back together again. And let's start with the truth. Let's confess our sins to God and also to each other using the prayer of confession on the screen. And then there'll be a silent moment of confession. Let us pray. Almighty God, Mother of mercy, Father of grace, you have called us to one table, but we have pursued our own course. You have promised us the abundance of all creation, but in our greed and in our envy, the world goes without. You have promised us the bread of life itself, but in our pride and in our arrogance, the world goes hungry. You have promised us the waters of peace and justice, but in our violence and in our discord, the world goes thirsty. And now we are famished too, Lord. Have mercy on us. Forgive us again. Transform us this morning and send us from this table as servants of your righteousness. By the power of your Son, our Lord, here are silent confessions. our cups run dry, even when our plates are empty, and even when our hearts feel barren, friends, you have been called and claimed by the God of all things and by the abundance of God's grace and by the power of God's love. Your sins have been forgiven. Go in peace. look like they're dressed up in things from different countries. You see that little girl? That kind of hat. We don't usually wear that kind of hat, do we? Or this one? Or this one? They're dressed in their tradition. That's right. They're dressed in their traditional way for their country. Now today, I'm talking about different countries because it is World Communion Sunday. And look what I brought. Let's see if I can get it out. 
Brooks, what did I bring? I brought flags, that's right. Flags from different countries. And there's bread, that's right. Yes, you may, you may have. Oh, God bless you. Now the, the flags are from different countries, but the bread, we are all going to, okay. we are all going to be sharing bread. Now, different churches might use different kinds of bread. But we say the body of Christ broken for you. Would you like some of this bread? Yes. Yes? Okay, I'm going to tear some off. There you go. Would you like some? Would you like some? No, thank you. Would you like some? Raylan? No, thanks. So what I would like you to do while you're munching on that bread is to think about all the other children and people in the world that love God and will be celebrating this holy meal together today. Would you pray with me? God of us all, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world today help us to treat all people as your children amen. amen okay put your flags back in the bread for me oh lord there are so many times in life when we find ourselves feeling joyless unwanted dirty there is always something wrong waiting even right outside the doors of the church to wrap us in darkness, hopelessness, despair. Send the Holy Spirit light bringer to dispel the shadows and help us understand the messages to us found in your word. We pray these things in the name of the, and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and only Savior. Amen. The Old Testament reading it was from Psalms 51, 10 through 13, found in your pew Bible in 521. Listen now for the word of God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sorry about that. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, Tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath and all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty. Joy at the work of your hand. 
Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty My shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath and all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy. Thessalonians, listen for God's word. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power, for the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you know of our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece throughout Macedonia and Acacia. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us ears to hear your story in these words of scripture. Give us eyes to see your story in the faces of those that surround us. And O oh Lord, give us faith enough that by your grace we might serve you until the end of our days. Amen. Once, the well-known English theologian, Dr. Leslie Weatherhead, told this story about visiting the place where John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, had his famous heartwarming experience on Aldersgate Street in London. Dr. Weatherhead visited the chapel where this event occurred, and on the pew there was a plaque commemorating the important event in Wesley's life. Dr. Weatherhead said he was very moved, and he sat down in the back of the chapel to meditate and pray. He said that at the time, he was the only one in the chapel, which, because of the clouds, was rather dark inside. When in came an older man wearing a heavy, tattered coat and walking with a cane, 
and the older man didn't see Weatherhead and proceeded down the aisle to the front. And he paused at the plaque and he read it out loud. On this spot, on May 24th, 1738, John Wesley's heart was strangely warmed. And immediately, the older man dropped down to his knees, looked upward and said, do it again, Lord, do it again for me. Isn't that a wonderful prayer? Do it again for me. Now, we don't know exactly what happened when Wesley's heart was warmed, but we do know that he was a changed man. As one pastor put it, after that, John Wesley had a new life, a new warmth, a new energy, a new purpose, and a new power. Somehow the Holy Spirit had brushed across John Wesley's heart and set it aflame. Wesley had come to the new American colony of Georgia as a missionary before the Aldersgate experience. He trusted God, but then he came after the experience, before he had failed miserably. But then when he came back, miraculous things happened. During his ministry, I read that John Wesley rode more than 25,000 miles on horseback. I, I can't imagine. I mean, last summer I rode about an hour and I was saddle sore in just that short time. That is the distance of 10 complete trips around the globe on a horse. He preached more than 40,000 sermons and with his brother Charles, they wrote close to 7,000 hymns. He developed many cures for diseases, which I didn't know. And he wrote a book on medicine and started medical clinics for the poor. In 1791, when John Wesley died, there were 79,000 Methodists in England and about 40,000 in America. And by 1957, there were 40 million Methodists worldwide. That is power. John Wesley had the power in his eyes, the power in his voice, and was a huge witness for Jesus Christ. But he was only 5 foot 3 inches and 128 pounds. He was a small man in stature but became a spiritual giant because of the Holy Spirit. Justin Nixon wrote that the basic difference between physical power and spiritual power is that we use physical power, but spiritual power uses us. The Holy Spirit uses us. The Holy Spirit uses the church. Have any of you ever been to Ukigabek? Let me try it again. Ukiagvik. Uki there it is. Ukiagvik. It's in Alaska. Have any of you ever been to anywhere in Alaska? Raise your hand. Anybody been to Alaska? A few of you. Okay. Well, Ukiagvik used to be known as Barrow, Alaska. And the former moderator of the PCUSA, Marge Carpenter, tells of going to Ukiagvik, which is located north of the Arctic Circle, beyond all the beautiful mountains and forests and streams. There are no roads going in or out of Ukiagvik because it is so isolated. In the north, it's the northernmost town in the United States. It's also one of the oldest. The archaeological evidence found in that area is from 500 CE. There's an airport and barges. Barges can get in there in the spring. 
and almost everyone in Ukiavik is Presbyterian, in part because of how the Holy Spirit used a missionary, Sheldon Jackson, who went up there by dog sled over 140 years ago and began a church. Now, the church has a radio program that they broadcast every week. And they began this years and years ago, long before the internet. And it went all around the top of the world, to Lapland and Greenland and Siberia. It was full of Bible stories and scriptures and hymns. And at the end of every program, they would sing, Jesus Loves Me, in their native language. Now, after the breakup of the Soviet Union, the Presbyterians in Ukiavik began to work with their presbytery and their synod to go to Siberia. Now, Siberia is only 18 miles away and tried to start a church there. Now, there was not one church there at the time, not even a Russian Orthodox church. Well, when they got to Siberia, the Siberians came up and sang, Jesus loves me. And the Americans said, where did you learn that? And they said, the radio. And the people of Ukiavik were so proud. And then one of the Siberians stepped forward and asked, have you come to tell us who this Jesus is that loves us? The Holy Spirit used Sheldon Jackson. The Holy Spirit empowered the Ukiavik Presbyterian Church. The Holy Spirit used the radio station and the presbytery and the synod. What an example of the power of the Spirit. Now, a more recent example of the Holy Spirit and power has to do with solar and electrical power. A few years ago, three churches, as well as other Christians, enabled a 15-year-old Boy Scout working on his Eagle Scout project to assist a church and a school in Haiti to get electricity. Quentin Ajaluni from Shreveport, Louisiana, Troop 15, decided he wanted to help kids that were less fortunate. And for his Eagle Project, he had a big dream to install solar panels in Haiti so the kids there could use their computers. He raised money and partnered with two churches in Shreveport and flew to Haiti along with his associate pastor from First Presbyterian Church and the elder who moderated the outreach ministry team at the time and another mission-minded friend from Arkansas and his dad. And at the St. Matthias Church compound near Grand, Grand Colleen, Haiti, he organized the four adults and the Haitian helpers and installed six solar panels. This brought electricity to their library, their auditorium, their computer lab, their cafeteria, and two guest rooms usually used by a traveling doctor and midwife. The Holy Spirit, I believe, put this project on Quentin's heart. It touched the churches and their leadership so that they too might be inspired to get behind this ambitious mission. And even when the U.S. put a travel band in place for Haiti just a month or two before the scheduled trip, because of the rioting in Haiti. Quentin could not be deterred. The ban was lifted and the trip became a reality. And after three days of hard work and about 25 workers there, there is new power. The power of new relationships. The power of solar electricity. The power of collaboration and partnership the Holy Spirit empowers. Think about Peter from the Bible. 
You know, one minute he was hot, the next one he was cold, always opening his mouth at the wrong time, saying the wrong thing. Remember, Peter let Jesus down and denied him at a critical moment. I'm sure he felt like a failure. When Peter relied on his own strength, he was inconsistent. Over and over, he said the wrong things at the wrong time. But then came the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and Peter was empowered. He preached a sermon, one sermon, and over 3,000 were baptized that day. Peter felt weak. But the Spirit of the Lord enabled him to become a tower of strength. The Holy Spirit can restore our strength or give us strength we never knew we had. This is good news. God never deserts us. God's Spirit empowers us. And through Christ and situations and people, we are redeemed. Adelaide Stevenson was an American lawyer, politician, and diplomat who sometimes told this story. He said, a young man approached his girlfriend's father to ask for her hand in marriage. The father was skeptical and said, you don't know what you're asking. She has very extravagant taste. I doubt very much that you'll be able to support my daughter the way she's accustomed. I mean, I'm a wealthy man and I can barely manage it myself. The young man thought for a moment and he said, Sir, I believe I have it. You and I should just pool our resources. That's the message of the Christian faith. God is with us, and when we pool our resources with God, God's spirit and strength will carry us, will see us through in this life and in the life to come. This World Communion Day, I am reminded that the power of the Holy Spirit is not just for us, but it's for all who call Jesus Lord in every nation. The power of the Holy Spirit. It's also for us, Beth Page Presbyterian Church. The power of the Holy Spirit is real and will carry us through, empowered and inspired. Amen. And I'm in. Before we approach Christ's table, I want to point out that we do not approach it alone. We approach this World Communion Sunday with other Christians around the world in congregations large and small, speaking every language and speaking one language. So that together we can do great things to bring about God's kingdom. This morning during our offering, the plate will be passed, but also in the pew, there's a pink card, and on one side of the pink card is a QR code for those who wish to give electronically. Our morning offering. Pray. Gracious God, you create more than we could ever hope to return. You share more than we could ever hope to deserve. And yet we pray that you would accept these humble gifts, May they honor and glorify you in all creation, and may they empower us for the work of witness and service for the sake of justice and the sake of peace, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
table is for all of us, near and far, high and low, east and west, north and south. This table is for all of us, but it's not our table. It's not a Presbyterian table. It's not even an American table. It's God's table. And it is for us, and it is for all. It's a table of grace. So come, take your place at the table of grace. You are welcome. You are invited. You are called to come. Let us share this meal together. Please join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, creator and ruler of the universe. Even when we were dust, when our story begins in dust, you were there. Your word was there, your breath into the lifeless void. And upon your word, all creation sprang into life. When we were in the wilderness, terrified and timid, you were there. Your word was there, with manna just enough for today, with water even from the driest rock, with the abundant grace upon which our story always rests. And when we fell short, slaves to power and greed, you were there. Your word was there on the lips of prophets and in the hearts of servants, in stories of revolution and revelation and liberation, calling us even now to acts of courage and witness and peace. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and prophets and apostles and martyrs and with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we share may retell our common stories together and reshape our common bonds together and remember our common grace together in the communion of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ the one in whose life and death you have torn down our divisions. And so may we be one with all who share this feast on this day of all days with all your children in every corner of your table. May we share this abundant cup with all who thirst for your justice. May we share this abundant bread for those who hunger for your righteousness and may we be united in every corner of the world with your story united in hope united in vision united in purpose united in ministry in every place as this bread is christ's body for us 
send us from this table to be the body of Christ in all the world. And hear us as we pray together the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the choir and the servers to come forward. He broke it. And he gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same way he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this remembering me. this table. You were fed at this table. You were united at this table. And now, as you are sent forth, go in courage. Give a drink to all who thirst. Share the good news. Christ is risen. The Holy Spirit is real. Go and serve. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>